Hey guys, it's Legendary Luke here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you 10 advanced tips and tricks that all controller players can use, whether you play console or controller on PC. These tips and tricks range from advanced movement techniques like super gliding, to moving while looting deck boxes, and controller settings that will change how you play Apex. No matter who you are, I guarantee that by watching the entire video you will learn something new or find something that helps you out. To start the video off, I want to say that I do not currently play on controller. I built a PC a couple months back and switched to playing on mouse and keyboard. However, I started off playing the game day one on Xbox, which is one of the main reasons that I wanted to make this video. I feel like there are a lot of advanced things to do on controller that no one talks about, and that is going to be the goal of this video. So starting off with tip number one is a highly sought after movement technique that most controller players do not know how to do. The technique I'm talking about is zip zagging. Zip zagging is a zip line technique used by many of the top pros. You see a lot of movement gods like Fade and Lyric do it, which are all high sense mouse and keyboard players, which leads a lot of controller players to think that it is not possible. Don't worry though, I will walk you step by step through how to do it on the zipline and firing range. The key to zip zagging on controller is going to be holding your interact button the entire time. This will take the timing aspect out of pressing interact and jump one after the other. All you'll have to do is hold down interact, rotate your camera as quickly as you can, and spam jump. That's literally all you have to do, and as long as you don't play on an extremely low sensitivity, it'll definitely be possible for you. Just make sure you are holding down your interact button the entire time. Tip number three is to experiment with ALC settings. ALC settings are advanced look and aiming settings only available to controller players. I highly recommend you experiment with them because they can improve your aim drastically. What I usually do is find a pro player I like, copy their ALC settings, and use them in the firing range. I experiment and see if I like them. From there, I will fine tune the settings to perfectly fit my aim. I highly recommend you research what each setting does so that you can adjust accordingly. Finding your ALC settings is extremely useful for having good aim in Apex Legends. Tip number three is another settings tip, but it has to do with button layout. If you go to the controller tab in your settings, you should find six different presets to choose from. Default, Button Puncher, Evolved, Grenader, and Ninja. Each one of these layouts will custom map your buttons for you. What I look for when I map out my buttons is a layout that mostly allows me to keep my left thumb on the analog stick. That is because the left thumb is what you aim with and having to take it off the stick is less than ideal. The ones I recommend you try out are Button Puncher, Ninja, and Bumper Jumper. If you try out one of these layouts and like it, set that to be your default setting and you're good to go. If you don't really like any of them, or just like parts of what one has to offer, then that is what the customized tab is for. On the customized tab, you can custom map your buttons to suit whatever your preference is. Tip number four and the last settings tip is to put your crouch on toggle, not hold. This will help your strafe and also allow you to do much more advanced movement. More on that later though. Also, locate your menu cursor speed setting and make sure it is set to the highest it can be while you can still control it. Again, I'll explain why this is useful later in the video. One of the huge advantages PC players have over controller players is that they can move while looting death boxes. This is huge, especially for armor swapping in the middle of fights. On controller, you cannot move while you are in the death box menu, but your character will actually continue the action you were doing when you entered. That means if you were sprinting, you will continue sprinting, and if you were jumping, you will continue jumping. This is where having a high menu cursor speed sensitivity will come into play. As you sprint by the box, you need to be able to grab an armor swap or ammo before you run too far out of range. Learning how to jump while looting is one of the best skills to have as a controller player because you can strafe before going into the death box. You have to wait a second to enter the death box anyways, and in that time you can be strafing. 
Then, right as the circle is almost filled in, you can jump in any direction, get into the menu, get an armor swap, and get out. With a high cursor speed and some muscle memory, you should be able to do this all in the course of one jump. We are halfway through the video with more great tips and tricks coming, so please like and subscribe, it would help me out a lot. Tip number 6 is super gliding on controller. This is probably the best, most advanced movement possible for controller players. And not only that, it's actually easier to do on consoles because they get lower FPS, but I'll explain that in a little bit. First, let me explain what a super glide actually is. A super glide is a newer movement technique that allows you immediately after climbing an object such as a fence or box to pretty much get launched off of it. I know most of you are thinking that you maybe have done this in your games by accident, but I can guarantee you, you probably didn't. What you are thinking of is another technique similar, and super gliding is exactly like it, it just makes you go way further. To super glide on controller, start by climbing the object, then as soon as your legs are fully outstretched, right at the top, jump and crouch at the same time. There is only 1 to 2 frames to pull the move off, which is why it is so difficult. It's also what makes it easier to do on console, because of the lower FPS. Most PC players play on 144 or 240Hz, so the timing for them is a lot more delicate, because their frames are moving faster. What helped me get the timing down was looking at my character's legs. The moment they are fully outstretched is the time that you should be pressing jump and crouch. If done correctly, you should be able to clear the metal box and firing range. Also, if you look at yourself in third person, your leg should be completely outstretched in the air. Tip number 7 is an extremely underrated tip, and I do not know why more people don't talk about it. It's actually knowing how to use aim assist to its full potential. If you wonder what I mean by that, it's that aim assist works best under certain circumstances, and you should be creating those circumstances to get the best aim assist. For example, aim assist works better the closer you are to your target. That means you will get more aim assist shooting at a target up close than from long range. Aim assist is also amplified when the target is bigger on your screen. To really capitalize on this, you have to use the correct scopes. Put scopes with a zoom on them, such as the 2x or 3x, on guns that you want to be using at longer ranges. If you have a weak scope, then aim assist is going to end up doing little for you, which is not good. My recommendation is to use scopes with multiple ranges on them, such as the 1x2 or 2x4. This will give more versatility to your weapon and allow aim assist to do its work at longer ranges. I know this may sound weird, but sensitivity can actually affect aim assist too. I know playing on a high sensitivity on controller might look cooler and also help you do some movement, but it actually hurts you when it comes to aim assist. There is a certain range around a target when aim assist activates and help you snap onto that target. Playing on a higher sensitivity makes it easier to get out of that range and thus out of aim assist. Playing on lower sensitivity makes it easier to stay in that zone. All you need are slight adjustments and letting aim assist do the rest. The last thing to know to fully maximize aim assist is that it works better with fully auto guns. This includes the R99, Volt, and R31 Carbine. Guns like the EVA 8 and Wingman have less aim assist on them because they are single fire, so keep that in mind when you choose your loadout. Tip number 8 is actually going to be how to b-hop on a controller. B-hopping is super useful especially for healing and getting around corners. Sadly, many controller players struggle with it and cannot do it. To b-hop on a controller, start by doing a slide jump. Do not release crouch. You want to hold down crouch the entire time. Make sure your movement stick is pointed forward and then just press jump exactly as you hit the ground and this should create the bunny hopping effect. Get the hang of the normal bunny hop first, then add in sideways movement. It's the same movements, but you also move both sticks about halfway in the direction you want to go. Bunny hopping side to side will help you keep more momentum and go for longer. Tip number 9 is a semi-tap strafe or flick strafe off of Octane's jump pad. On a jump pad, you're an open target, which is never good, and you're kind of stuck going in the direction that you originally took the pad in. 
But don't worry, that's where click strafing can help you out. You can get around a 90 degree directional change with flick strafing when you take a jump pad. To do it, take the jump pad and wait for your double jump. As you press double jump, flick your left stick quickly up, then straight left or right in the direction you are trying to go. At the same time, look in that direction. That's pretty much it. It's not super complicated. Just go into the firing range and give it a try. Tip number 10 is a super big tip for controller players and is actually one of the reasons I decided to make this video. It's my biggest advice for any controller player in any game. This big tip is to learn claw or buy a controller with paddles. What both of these let you do is keep your left thumb on the analog stick, which is absolutely crucial in FPS games. Your left thumb is what you aim with. And to also have your thumb devoted to pressing another four buttons is definitely not what you want. People who play claw, like me, their index finger forms a claw to press the A, B, X, and Y buttons, or circle, triangle, square, and X buttons if you're on PS4. It takes quite a lot of time and effort to learn how to play claw, but when you do, there is a massive payoff. It lets your left thumb stay entirely devoted to aiming, while your pointer finger gets all the buttons. This greatly improves aim and is useful in any FPS game you would want to play. What a scuff or Xbox Elite controller does is pretty much the same thing. They have paddles on the back that can be binded to any button. Binding the paddles to the buttons I mentioned previously will have the same effect of freeing up your left thumb for aiming. At the end of the day, learning claw or buying a scuff controller will help you in any game and is something I highly recommend. That was the end of the video, please like and sub if you enjoyed it or learned something new. Also check out my channel because I have a lot of other useful content like this. Thank you for watching.